Today we're, I'm going to show you some equipment for an observational experiment that we can do. So the most important piece of equipment I have is a primary and secondary coil. So this is the primary and secondary coil. It also has a core. So the primary and secondary coil come apart. You may not be able to tell this in the video, but inside of this yellow piece of plastic there are many, many turns of copper wire wrapped around a brass tube and it has two terminals to connect it to other wires. This is very similar. It also has many, many turns of copper wire wrapped around a brass tube. The copper wire that's wrapped around there is insulated so that it makes a coil that goes the length of the tube in each case. And then this is called a soft iron core. It's been chrome plated so it looks nice and shiny, but it's just a, a piece of iron. Um, the inner coil is not magnetic. It won't pick up anything. The outer coil is not magnetic. It also won't pick up anything. The soft iron core is very slightly magnetic. It'll pick up a few staples, but it won't pick up a small paper clip very well. Here I have a galvanometer. This is a kind of electric meter that is not actually calibrated in any units that we normally use. And this is a low voltage power supply. We're filming. Okay, I'm going to connect the outer coil to the meter with these two wires. And I want you to watch the meter. I'm going to take the inner coil and insert it. Nothing happens on the meter when the inner coil is inserted or moved back and forth. But if I take the iron core and insert it, we'll see if something happens. There's a tiny movement of the needle. If I put the core in to your left, then the needle moves to your left. If I pull it out to your right, the needle moves to your right. If I move the core faster, the needle moves more. Now let's try one more thing. Let's connect the inner core to the power supply. First, I'll turn the power supply on, and I'll turn it up very slightly. Notice when I do that, oops, that the inner core is magnetic, like it was before, but now it's a little bit better magnet. If I turn it up a little bit more, it easily picks up the small paper clips and the large paper clips. So now I've made this into an electromagnet. Watch the meter needle while I insert the electromagnet into the core. Now you notice a very large deflection even when I move the coil slowly. If I turn the electromagnet's power supply up a little bit, you notice the meter needle wiggled when I turned it, perhaps, and now I get even larger deflections. If I move the inner coil rapidly, I can get a full scale deflection. One last thing to notice with the electromagnet. Watch what happens when I turn the electromagnet off very large deflection, very quick deflection, and when I turn the electromagnet on, same thing in the other direction. That's it. I have a small rod-shaped permanent magnet with a piece of blue tape wrapped around one end so I can tell one end from the other. 
a pretty good magnet. It picks up the staples easily, the small paper clips easily, and even picks up the large paper clips. I'm going to drop this permanent magnet through this coil, which is connected to the galvanometer, the uncalibrated meter. And watch what happens when I drop it with the blue tape end pointed downward. You should see that the meter needle deflects slightly one way and then the other way as the magnet first falls into the coil and then out of the coil. Now I'm going to turn the magnet around so that the blue tape side goes last. And we should see that the effect is the opposite. The meter needle goes the other way at first and then another way after the, as the magnet falls out. Okay, now I have the other part of the primary secondary coil, the outer coil, which has more turns in it than the inner coil. I'm going to perform the same experiment. I'm going to drop the permanent magnet through the coil with the blue tape side downward and we're going to watch what happens on the meter. You should see that the meter needle deflects even more than it did before because there are more turns in the coil. And now I'm going to perform the same experiments I did before. I'm just going to turn the permanent magnet around so that the blue tape side now enters the magnet last. And you should see that the same effect is observed just in the opposite direction. Isn't that cool?